Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a mystery thriller film. 7. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. An old veteran detective of a big city named Somerset comes to a gruesome crime scene. As he tries to speculate the background of the crime, a mysterious man walks in. Apparently, the man is a young, cocky, hot-tempered detective named Mills who has just got assigned to the city. It appears that he would work alongside Somerset. He seems not to be happy with the idea that Somerset will mentor him, thinking he already has enough expertise. But he is only a newbie in the city, so he does not have a choice but to follow. The following day, Mills wakes up, having a good hormone mood besides his wife called Wife. But he suddenly receives a call from his work. Later, he meets Somerset at the reigning crime scene. The victim, called Spaghetti Victim, appears to be a morbidly obese man with his face lying on a filthy spaghetti plate. Somerset inspects the scene while Mills takes note at the side. Then, Forensics comes to take the body for autopsy. Soon after, the forensic examiner discusses that the victim was force-fed until he could not take it anymore. When the victim cannot eat anymore, the murderer delivered the killing blow by kicking the victim's stomach. After that, Somerset informs their captain that he does not want to take the murder case. He speculates that there is something bigger behind the murder case, so it would take a long time to solve. It turns out that Somerset is about to retire, so he does not want to leave the case unfinished for the first time in his career. However, they cannot let Mills handle the case, leaving him in frustration. Somerset then takes the case, while Mills is soon assigned to handle the case of the murdered prominent defense lawyer in the city. Mills then comes to the office of the lawyer to observe. As Mills looks down on the floor, he finds the word greed written using blood. Later, Captain comes to inform Somerset about the greed victim's murder case. After that, Captain hands over a piece of evidence to Somerset. The evidence seems to be a piece of plastic found in the stomach of the spaghetti victim. This further arouses Somerset's curiosity about the case. He then comes to the crime scene to gather more information. Upon observation, he finds the pieces of plastic fitting in the holes of the floor. To check the wall behind, Somerset pushes aside the fridge. He then finds the word gluttony written using grease. He also finds a note with a quotation from Paradise Lost, a book written by Milton that depicts seven deadly sin. With the recent murder case related to gluttony and greed, Somerset infers that the murderer has a design based on the seven deadly sins. He then speculates that there are five more murders to be expected. The following day, Mills receives a call from wife in his office. On the phone, wife requests to speak with Somerset. It turns out that wife wants to invite Somerset to dinner so that Mill can get along with him. Later, wife welcomes Somerset at their home. Mills comes to play with their dogs, while Somerset and wife chit-chat about how she met Mills. When dinner is ready, they happily eat together. Suddenly, the house shakes when the train passes by. Mills then reveals that they got fooled by the real estate agent who sold the house. In response, Somerset jokingly tells them that they can now enjoy their soothing and vibrating home. Somerset and wife then burst into laughter. After that, wife goes to bed, while Somerset and Mills continue to look for clues on the murder case. As they look at the photo of the greed victim's wife, called Mrs. Greed, they see blood surrounding her eyes. So they go to the grieving Mrs. Greed to ask her about the crime scene photos. Upon looking at the photos, she notices that the painting on the crime scene is inverted. They then immediately go to the crime scene to check the painting. As Somerset eagerly searches for something, he finds a fingerprint on the wall behind the painting. When they submit the fingerprints to the lab, the machine reveals that the fingerprint has a help me pattern. But the fingerprints appear not to be from the greed victim, so they wait outside for the result of the fingerprint identification. The following day, Captain declares the test result. The fingerprint belongs to a pedophile named Vic. Apparently, Vic, uh, freed from a conviction for abusing a minor by a lawyer, the lawyer turns out to be the greed victim. Thinking that Vic might be the killer, special forces, alongside Somerset and Mills, raid his apartment. But when they arrive there, they only see Vic in a pitiful condition. Vic's body seems like a corpse, while his hand is missing. Presumably, the killer used his hand for the fingerprint marks found earlier. The word sloth is written on the wall, making him the killer's third victim. As they slowly check for the pieces of evidence, Vic suddenly coughs, revealing that he is still alive. This startles the special forces as if they witness a corpse coming to life. The medical team immediately brings him to the hospital. Meanwhile, Mills is frustrated, thinking that the killer is shitting on them. Soon after, they come to the hospital to interrogate Vic. However, Vic cannot answer them since the doctor reveals that Vic chewed his tongue while his brain turned to mush due to his gruesome condition at the apartment. Apparently, the killer feeds him drugs so that he can survive longer in that pitiful condition. 
The following day, wife comes to meet Somerset since she needs advice. She expresses her hatred of her life in the city. Then she reveals that she is pregnant, but she keeps it a secret from Mills. Somerset then advises her using his personal experience. It turns out that Somerset convinces his former life partner to abort their child. He thinks it is the right decision, since it is difficult to raise a child in this chaotic world. But he still feels remorse for that decision. Somerset then advises wife to let Mills know about it, when she is certain about keeping the child. Wife expresses her gratitude to Somerset's advice. Later, at the headquarters, Somerset and Mills come to speculate about the murder cases. As Mills gets frustrated at the slow progress of the case, he keeps rambling on Somerset. Suddenly, Somerset finds a clue from his rambling. Somerset realizes that the killer must have read a book that inspired its murder design. This means that the killer must have gone to read at the library. Somerset then bribes a former FBI agent to provide information about the visitors of the library. An hour later, the agent brings the information to them. The guy who continuously reads books about seven deadly sins appears to be a guy named Doe. So they pay a visit to Doe's apartment. But Doe arrives from outside and suddenly shoots at them. Then he quickly runs away. Mills eagerly chases him along with the populated apartment. He runs towards a narrow road outside, where he suddenly disappears as Mills comes to find him. Doe instantly smashes Mills' head out of nowhere. Then he points the gun at Mills' head, but he does not proceed to pull the trigger. Instead, he walks away from there. Shortly after, Mills furiously comes to his apartment to inspect it. However, Somerset lets him understand that he cannot intrude on the apartment without probable cause. So Mills bribes a random homeless person to testify against Doe, so they can have a justified reason to inspect the apartment. After that, they come back to the apartment. Inside, they find religious objects, tools, and pieces of stuff that are related to the murder case earlier, including Vic's hand. In the other room, Somerset sees a massive pile of books and notebooks that possibly contain the idea behind the murder design. Later, the police force flock to the apartment to gather every piece of evidence they can get. Mills answers a call from Doe. He says that he greatly admires Mills. He also apologizes for hurting Mills earlier. After that, Mills and Somerset continue to find something among the pieces of evidence. A photo of a prostitute suddenly catches their attention. They speculate that she might be the next victim. The following day, a receipt they found at the apartment leads them to a leather shop where Doe bought a hormone device. Suddenly, Somerset's pager informs him that the police found the dead body of the prostitute, so they head towards the rowdy crime scene. The word lust is written at the door. Meanwhile, the dead body of the prostitute is tied to the bed. On the side, there is a seemingly traumatized man having tantrums on the side. In the interrogation room, the traumatized man reveals that the killer forced him to wear the knife dildo. Then the killer made him abuse the girl using the knife dildo while placing a gun in his mouth. On the other side, the establishment owner testifies that he does not notice anything suspicious, since it is normal to bring suitcases there. Mills then asks him if he likes what he sees in his work. The owner frankly tells him that he does not like what he sees, but he just accepts it, since that is how life works. Mills then becomes speechless since it reflects his job as a detective, who constantly witnesses gruesome crime scenes. Later, Mills and Somerset are having a serious conversation at a bar. Somerset warns Mills that even if they catch Doe, it does not mean that things would have a happy ending, since Doe is just a man and not Satan itself. This means that evil would continue to exist in the world, despite catching Doe. At this moment, due to his long time as a detective, Somerset becomes cynical about society. On the contrary, the young Mills is hopeful that he can do something to solve the evils of society as a detective. Mills says that Somerset is just being cynical, since he wants to quit. However, Mills thinks that deep inside, Somerset believes that a better society is still possible. The following day, the police find the next victim, who appears to be a model. At the wall, the word pride is written. Doe cut off her nose, and he gave her a choice of whether to commit suicide by taking the drugs, or asks for help on the phone and live forever with scars all over her body. She chooses to commit suicide instead. Presumably, her pride made her choose to commit suicide, rather than live without her beauty. Soon after, Doe walks inside the police headquarters. Apparently, he wants to surrender himself to the detectives. It appears that he cut off his finger, so they cannot get fingerprints from him. He then requests to have his lawyer. After Doe's lawyer talks to him, the lawyer reveals to the detectives the condition given by Doe. It turns out that Doe wants to take Somerset and Mills to the final two dead bodies. The lawyer says that Doe chose Mills since he greatly admires Mills. If they agree to do that, he will plead guilty and confess everything to the court. Otherwise, if they do not accept the offer, 
Doe will plead insanity to the court, since the court would possibly approve it. Somerset hesitates to accept the offer, thinking that Doe must be planning something behind. But they still accept the offer, since they want to guarantee that Doe will go to prison. After that, Mills and Somerset ride the car with Doe. Meanwhile, the police forces on helicopter escort them. Along the way, Mills tells Doe that no one will care about the execution of his murder design. Doe says that he cannot wait to show the complete act to Mills. But Mills continues to mock Doe and his acts. He keeps calling Doe a murderer and an insane man. Doe then reveals that he just uses people's sins against them, since these sins appear to be tolerated daily by society. So he intends to remind people about these sins. At their arrival at the deserted location, Doe instructs them to drive towards the middle of the power lines. There, Mills orders Doe to walk out of the car. Suddenly, a delivery van appears to be driving towards there. Somerset comes to intercept the delivery van, thinking that it might pose a danger. It turns out that it was only a random delivery guy who was paid 500 bucks to deliver a package for Mills. Somerset checks the package, and his face gets horrified, as if he sees something gruesome inside. Meanwhile, Doe reveals to Mills that he meant his admiration for him. Apparently, Doe envies the simple life of Mills. So that morning, he came to their house and tried to pretend to be a husband for wife. But it did not work out. Therefore, he took wife's pretty head as a souvenir instead. He also reveals that wife begs for her life for the sake of their unborn child. Mills then furiously wants to shoot Doe. At this moment, Doe is ready to take his punishment for being guilty of envy. At the same time, Mills would be guilty of wrath for shooting him. So Somerset warns Mills about Doe's plan. But Mills thinks about his pregnant wife and their unborn child. This makes Mills furiously shoot Doe several times, while Somerset helplessly witnesses the final act of Doe's masterpiece. The movie ends where the police take Mills away from the scene. Captain assures Somerset that they will take care of Mills, knowing that the court will convict him for executing Doe. Then Captain asks where Somerset will go, since the case is already closed. In response, he implies that he will continue to serve the police forces. In the end, Somerset quotes Hemingway saying, The world is a fine place and worth fighting for. And I agree with the second part. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.